So we're here to help you find your way back from the limitations that you have infused into your life experience because they're not real. There are no limitations that are imposed upon you. There are only limitations that you assume upon yourself. And that's hard to hear because you didn't mean to do it. But you did it because you didn't know about the law of attraction and you didn't know about your focus and you didn't know about vibration and you didn't know that when you focus upon something, wanted or not wanted, it's a come to me this thing, wanted or unwanted. When you shout no at something, you are literally saying, I don't want you, but come to me. And when you find something that you do want and you shout yes at it, you say, I've lived enough life to determine that I would like some of you. Come on. Come on. But then what do you do next? You say, come on, but you're coming too slowly. Or come on, but what took you so long? Or come on, but do I really get what I want? Come on. My mother wouldn't be happy about this. So we know. There's a lot of thinking that's going to take place today. And there are some things that are going to really resonate with you. And there are some things that are going to rub you the wrong way. Because we're going to talk to you about the laws of the universe and your worthy place within them. And then we're going to leave it up to you to do with that what you will. Because we are not here to guide you toward what you want. That is for you to choose. And that's what you knew when you came into this body. You also knew these things. You knew for sure that you were a lover to the very core of the 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 core of your being. And you knew that when you were doing something other than loving, that you would be out of whack with who you are. And you knew that that would feel like an empty void within you that you would later come to interpret as negative emotion like hatred or even fear. You knew that you had a stable basis of life experience. You knew that you are good and you knew that everyone around you is too. You knew that contrast is a good thing and that there would be plenty of it. And you knew that contrast would be the buffet from which you would choose your life experience. You knew that self-interest would be real. You knew that everyone would only and ever and only and ever and always be able to see through the perspective of self. And you thought that was a really good idea. You knew that you would be a self advocate and you expected everybody else to be too. But then you got here and some of them who had forgotten how to make their life the way they wanted it to be started telling you and others that you all need to sacrifice for them. You need to sacrifice your joy, your stuff, your happiness on the behalf of someone else. And that never set right with you. And you know why? Because that's not who you are and that's not what your inner being is advocating. Your inner being knows that there's enough of everything to go around. And you know why? Because your inner being knows that you're the creator of what's going around. That if all of you are wanting prosperity, then all of you are summoning it. And the prosperity level of all that is on planet Earth becomes more. Not trucked in from other planets, inspired from within you. You knew that. So now you know everything that is important to know about why you're here and who you are and why we're here interacting with you. We are eager to talk with you about anything that is important to you. There is no order of business here, although you will notice a perfect unfolding, you will. And there's nothing off limits. So if you want to talk about it and you're clear in your desire and easy about where you are, we'll find you and we'll have a conversation. Everyone in this room will not sit in the hot seat, but everything that you are wanting to know about will be addressed from this platform today. You'll see how it will come about. Sometimes somebody will get in the hot seat and it will evolve into a conversation that answers what you've been wondering about even before you raised your hand. Sometimes it will be more clarifying to you than if you were the one sitting in the hot seat because you won't have any nervousness or any yabbats going on within you. Yabbat, yabbat, yabbat. So what do you want to talk about? We're happy to have this conversation with all of you. So... There's a lot of trouble in this room. <laughs> Just the way we like it. Take it easy. Let's begin right here.
<laughs> I'm laughing. We know. Take your time. They all paid a lot of money, though. When you think about how much time has gone by while we're just messing around over here. Can you help us get this wrinkle out of this rug? You pull that way. You pull that way. Pull on the edge of that rug, will you? Not you. <laughs> You're not going to help us? Oh, you told me. <laughs> yeah, we're talking to you. <laughs> not you. <laughs> not you. Pull, pull on that. Mm. I'm wondering if I should let go of the question I had and just speak it right now. Whatever's on your mind, something's all wadded up in you. So let's talk about it if you want to. You raised your hand. We yes. saw it. We saw it well, I had a, with I, Esther's eyes. I had a question about thoughts. So I read that 30 to 50 percent of people don't have an inner monologue, and I've been wanting to ask you about that. We disagree. I I disagree too. <laughs> but rather than protesting that, we'd like to advocate that 100 percent of you are transmitting and receiving mechanisms and you've got a whole lot more going on and you're translating a lot of that into a continuous stream of thought but sometimes you don't feel like you want to say what's on your mind because you're worried about how it will be received and that's what's going on here in other words there's a lot you'd like to talk about but you've been surrounded by humans who have been observing you and from your perspective judging what's coming out of you and so you've sort of deliberately stifled that inner monologue you've turned it into an inner monologue the reason that people say you have no inner monologue is because you're not letting your inner monologue come out to their outer monologue so that they can hear it with their outer ears you know so so what um so what is it that you feel and want to talk about or think about that you don't want to talk about? <laughs> if it has something to do with past, your inner being is not really encouraging you to activate it into the now. Do any of you ever feel like this? She's talking with infinite intelligence and she cannot find the question and <laughs> well you've been great so far <laughs> um, I guess I'm afraid to to talk to people and especially the people closest to me because I'm not happy with what I've been doing with my life and I worry about what they'll say. We want to say everything to you all at once. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> but the most important thing that we want to say to you is that they're not as interested as you think they are. <laughs> they're, more, they're more interested in their lives. But what you think about what they think has you all wadded up. And so if we were standing in your physical shoes, we would not try to get anybody to understand where we are because nobody can really understand where you are. But we would calibrate to our inner being's point of view until we're standing in a sort of strong, steady place. And then from that place, we talk about what's going on. We'll ask you some questions and you don't have to answer any of them. But if one of them strikes you as something that you'd like to answer, then go ahead and answer. Have you had a lot of criticism in your life experience from those around you? Mm -hmm. 
and do they seem like joyful people? <laughs> so maybe their ideas suck. We call that calibrating to humans. And here's the best way that we have ever found of explaining what's going on to you. So every thought you've ever thought, everybody else too, every thought you've ever thought, exists within you as a vibrational possibility. It's like you're walking around with this bag of marbles that is magnetic in nature or electronic in nature. It's a technological marvel, really, because it can communicate with all the other marbles in all the other bags that all the other people are walking around with. So when you have a relationship or even a brief encounter with someone, what's active in your bag is the big deal. Like if you just had a fight with someone and then you got in traffic, you're going to attract other ornery drivers. And if there's anybody in the mood to flip somebody off, they're going to find you. You're going to hear horn honking and people are going to cut you off. In other words, those ornery bags of marbles are going to match up with what's active in your experience, which could lead you to feel taken advantage of or picked on like you didn't deserve it. What? I'm just driving down the street, my own business. I signaled, I stopped, I did all the right things, but it doesn't matter what you're doing. It matters what you're offering vibrationally because that's how you match up with people. So it doesn't feel fair to most humans, but we're going to explain something to you that you already know. You were born into environments with people already sort of set in their patterns of behavior. And you might want to say, well, what's up with that? Because I'm sure I didn't choose this on purpose because it has not been fun. And we say, yeah, you did choose it on purpose, though, because you wanted the exposure to what you didn't want so you could launch rockets of what you did want. And you knew that you had a guidance system. And you knew that sooner or later, and for most people it's later, that you would figure out enough is enough of all of this and that you just wouldn't put up with something that did not feel good for so long. And that's what causes people like you to turn more inward because you believe that you can't trust them. And you know what? You can't. Or you can. You can trust them to be as ornery as they've shown you that they are or as negative as they've shown you. And, of course, all of them aren't that way. But when some of them are dominant, really get your attention, it makes you attract more that are like that. And so even though you attract some of everything, it can dominantly feel like people are against you when... Really, no one has the power to get into your bag of marbles and cause any discord. Only you do. But when you see the way some people behave and you respond to how they're behaving, now your marbles are affected and so then you get more of that. So that's why we are here having these conversations. Because you all have been saying in mass, what's going on? I thought you said I came here to live a joyous life experience. And there are so many ornery people around me that are picking on me and others that I'm not having a very good time. And so we show up in a format that you can hear to say to you, you've got to decide what you're going to calibrate to. And you've got two choices. You can calibrate to the peanut gallery. And there's a lot of good stuff in that peanut gallery. Or you can calibrate to your inner being who 100% of the time knows who you are, why you're here, and where you are in relationship to where you want to be. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.